This is Jared from Commit Quality. And in this video, we're going to discuss environments and the different variables we can create. So in our last video, we discussed variables in collections. In this video, I wanted to break down environments and variables and the different scope levels attached to each of them. What is an environment to start us off? It's essentially a set of variables that you can use in your Postman requests. You can use environments to group sets of values together and share them across requests. So I guess the point of an environment is to be able to quickly change two different environments. So you could select you could create one environment for the test environment, and then you could switch, create another one to easily switch to the production version. Just to recap, on the last video, we talked about variables and how they allowed you to reuse values in your requests. You can set variables at a global level, environment level, and a collection level. And you also have kind of scope down ones into tests, which we'll go on in a different topic. With the base knowledge from what we've already achieved from our last videos, let's create some environments. So in Postman, on the left, you've got this environments tab. So let's click on that. And at the moment, we don't have any environments. Let's create one. So I'm going to create it. And the name of it is going to be, it's going to be for the JSON placeholder. So we'll say JSON placeholder, and we'll call it test. Now, this is imaginary because there is no test environment for, for the JSON placeholder API. Uh, so this is never going to work. But inside the variable, like we did with collect the collections, we're going to say base URL. The type is default because it's not going to be a secret. And we need to enter the initial and current values. So I'm going to go back to collections, and I'm going to take the URL here. So let me close that. Uh, initial value, of course, we don't want posts. We just want JSON placeholder type API.com, type code API. And I'm going to actually add to the start of this test because this is our test environment. And I'm going to say reset all to copy this value to the current value. And I'm going to save this environment. So this is our test environment. And now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go into environments, click the plus button, and this is going to be our production. So the one that actually does exist. So JSON placeholder production. Once again, the variable will be called base URL. Set the initial value. Of course, we don't want the post endpoint. And we'll save this. Let's just make sure that the forward slash has been taken away from both of those. So there we are. We now have two environments. Now, we did touch on initial and current values um, in the previous video. But just to recap, the initial value is what others will see when they import your collection. And the current value is what you are using in your own version of Postman. And we went through the example of a password, which is sensitive data. You'd want to set the initial value to something like enter password. And your current value would actually have that sensitive data password inside there. Since we're going on from the previous video, we we now have three different base URL variables. We have this production one, we have this test one, which of course doesn't work, but we also, if you remember, have the collections one. So if I go into collections and click edit, we can see we have this variable base URL, which is scoped to everything just in this collection, whereas the environment can, can be applied for all of our collections, but we'll talk on scoping in a little bit of detail shortly. I'm going to close all these and I'm going to open up one of my JSON placeholder requests, which already has the base URL variable. If I hover over it, we can see the initial and current values and we can see it's scope to collection. And the reason this is not scope to environments is because we haven't set one yet. So up the top right, we've got no environment. But if we click it, you can see you've got the JSON placeholder production and the JSON placeholder test. So if I select JSON placeholder test and then hover over the base URL variable, you can now see the initial and current is taking that test URL, which doesn't work. And the scope is now changed to environment. And exactly the same, if I go to the production one and hover over it, it's taken the production URL, which does work, and the scope is environment. If I set that back to no environment, you might have already guessed, it then goes to the collection. 
actually swap back to production, hit send, and we can see it's worked. If I go to test, because it doesn't exist, it's actually going to fail. So here we are, it said could not find it, which is what we'd expect in. So let's go back to no environment, takes the collection variable and works as expected. Now what if I have a variable that I want to set for my entire workspace. So it doesn't matter on the environment, doesn't matter about the collection. It just needs to apply for all of the workspace. And we can do that in global. So inside environments on the left, we can click on globals and we can add global variables, which like it says here, these are for a workspace and then always available within the scope of the workspace. So let's just create a new one. Let's say, subscribe and if you haven't already please hit that subscribe button because you'll be the first to know about the future postman videos and any others the initial value i'm just going to say commit quality if i could spell my own channel and i'll save that there i'm going to save this now and it doesn't matter whether i'm inside json placeholder board api or if i have no environment set i can now use this subscribe variable so i could actually say here we are it's popped up as subscribe hover over it and you can see the value is commit quality for initial and current and the scope is global and once again i can do the same so to use a variable in here obviously these are going to break the requests but it applies the same in the two different collections with no environment being set so if i send that of course it's going to hit say full phone not found so i'm going to undo that hit send and save and the same again for board api if i hit send it's going to say endpoint is not found for this one. So I'll close that off, save that, send to make sure all is okay. But I just want to show you how you can globally set things over your workspace. Like I said, there are other levels as well. Local, which is specific to a request, and this is set inside your pre-request script. So for example, let's, let's do something on board API. Let's say, uh, we're using some Postman and JavaScript now to say variables.set, which we'll cover this in more detail when we get to the automation part. But I can say set my variable here to, uh, we'll say commit quality. Oh. And we'll set the value to, I don't know, we'll just say one. It doesn't really matter what it is. And what we can do now is this is scoped local and we can retrieve this via the test. So we could say, uh, let's do a console.log. I know we haven't touched on debugging yet, but once again, this will be covered, but we can say PM variables.get, get whatever the variable name was. So uh, what was it? I think it was my channel name, right? Yep, yeah, it was commit quality. So I can say commit quality. If I open the console app down below and just clear everything, if I just send this request now, what we'll see is one has been output, which is the value of commit quality. So if I change it to something a bit more meaningful, like subscribe to my channel, save that and send, what you can see now is subscribe to my channel. So that's just a local variable. And like I said, we'll talk about this in more detail when we get into uh, writing tests. And there's another variable, which we're not going to cover off, but it's called a data variable. And that's one that's retrieved via data-driven input. So that's, for example, from importing a CSV or JSON file, then these values are used from inside that data file. We can create a future video on a data-driven kind of input and data-driven test and using Postman in the future for you as well. If you think that'd be useful, please drop a comment below. So we've had a quick introduction to the different scopes of the variables we can have. But you might be thinking, well, which variable takes priority? What happens when they all have the same name? Well, we saw with base URL example that environment took priority over the collection. And it's essentially goes in order from broadest to narrowest. So these scopes will be global, then it goes to collection, then environment, then data and local. So local takes priority overall, then it'd be the data, then environment, collection, then global. So global has kind of the least priority. And if I open up the Postman documentation, you can see here in the variable scopes is exactly what we just said. And this is really good. So I'll put the link to this in the description. So if we just take our previous example, environment took priority over collection because environment is narrower. 
And that's the basics of environments and variables. Like I said, we're going to be touching more on variables when we get into the basics of automating. But this is a really important and fundamental concept of making sure that you've organized, not repeated yourself more than you need to when using Postman. If you have any questions, please drop a comment below. A like and subscribe is appreciated. Thanks for watching.